Hello friends, in this video we are going to discuss multiple choice questions in biology subject. These are very important and expected questions in upcoming SSLC exam. Detailed explanation was given for each question. Do watch complete video and get benefit out of it. If you are watching first time this channel, please subscribe to get notifications. These are some of the important objective questions shared by the board on the chapter life processes. So let's know about arteries a little bit. So these are vessels which carry the blood from the heart to the various parts of the body. So they carry oxygenated blood from the heart except the pulmonary artery. So these have thick elastic walls and blood flows under high pressure in the absence of valves. So this is the structure of an artery. So you can see the RBCs carrying the oxygenated cells. So our first question goes like this. The arteries found in the human circulatory system. Option A. These have thick elastic walls and the blood flows under high pressure. Is it option B? The walls of the veins are thin and blood flows under low pressure. Is it option C? The walls of the veins are thin and blood flows under high pressure. Or option D. These have a thick elastic walls and the blood flows under low pressure. So what do you think the right option is? Yes, the right option is. So these have thick elastic walls and the blood flows under high pressure. Option A is the right option. So moving on to the next topic diffusion. So the soil water enters from the higher concentration to the lower concentration by the process of diffusion into the plants. So our second question, the plant roots absorb water from the soil through this process. Is it diffusion? Is it osmosis? Is it transpiration or is it none? Yes, you guess the right answer. It is the process of diffusion. So let us know something about the lymph. So lymph is another fluid involved in transportation. So some amount of the plasma, proteins and blood cells escape into the intercellular spaces in the tissues to form the lymph or the tissue fluid. So lymph is similar to blood plasma but it's colorless and contains less proteins. So if you see the difference between blood and lymph, so blood is reddish in color, lymph is pale yellow in color. Blood, so red blood cells are present but in the lymph, red blood cells, RBCs are absent. So it is bidirectional flow in the blood. So but the lymph flows unidirectional in only in one direction. So blood, the flow is rapid but in the lymph, the flow is slow. The leukocytes count relatively is less in the blood. So in the lymph, there is high leukocyte count. So the platelets are present in the blood, but platelets are absent in the lymph. So let's see what is the question. The third question, in humans, name the fluid that is involved in transportation like blood. Is it option A, platelets? Option B, white blood cells? Option C, lymph or option D, plasma. So, the fluid that is involved in transportation like blood is the lymph. So, moving on to the next concept. So, this is the structure of a nephron. So, we have the glomerulus, we have the Bowman's capsule, we have the proximal convoluted tubule, then comes the loop of Henle. So, then it is the distal convoluted tubule which connects to the collecting duct. The proximal convoluted tubule is where a majority of reabsorption occurs. About 67% of the water, so sodium ions and the potassium ions entering the nephron is reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tubule and returned to the circulation. Let's see what the question is. The fourth question here comes. Which part of the nephron that reabsorbs Useful substances such as amino acids, salt and water. Is it the tubular part? Option B, glomerulus. Is it option C, Bowman's capsule? Or option D, the collecting duct? Yes. You know the answer now. It is the tubular part. 
So the fifth question, identify the wrong statement. So when the right ventricle is enlarged, the deoxygenated blood comes from the body. Option B, to remove carbon dioxide from the blood, blood must reach the lungs. Option C, the pulmonary arteries pump pure blood into the blood. Or option D, deoxygenated blood flows through vena cava. So, the right answer is option C. The pulmonary arteries pump pure blood into the body. Here children, you should identify that. The question is, we have to identify the wrong statement. So, pulmonary veins pump the pure blood into the body. It's not pulmonary arteries. So, here for this fifth question, option C is the right answer. Confident arteriole filters the blood in the Bowman's capsule through the glomerulus. So then we have the PCT, proximal convoluted tubule. So then again, it is the Henle's loop, the distal convoluted loop tubule. So then it is the collecting duct. So which of the following is a correct path taken by urine in our body? Is it option A, B, C or D? So the right option is first, it's the kidney. Through the kidney, so again, it is the ureter, ureter to the bladder, so then bladder to the urethra. So option C is the right answer. So human heart, the function of the heart in any organism is to maintain a constant flow of blood throughout the body. This replenishes the oxygen and circulates nutrients among the cells and the tissues. Which vein brings clean blood from the lungs into the heart? Is it the renal vein? Is it the pulmonary vein? Is it the pulmonary artery or is it the iota? Yes, the pulmonary vein brings the clean blood from the lungs into the heart. So the next concept, phloem. Phloem is living tissue. It's responsible for transporting food and other organic materials. So, xylem consists of dead cells such as the parenchyma is the only living cells present in the xylem. So, phloem mainly contains living cells. So, the fibers are the only dead cells in the phloem. So, they comprise of the xylem vessels, the fiber and the trachets. So, eighth question comes like this. The phloem tissue in plants is responsible for the transport of is it water, water and minerals or glucose or all? The phloem tissue conducts glucose. So looking at the uh, chambers of the heart, whether two chambered, three chambered or four chambered heart. So, there are significant differences in the structure of the heart and the circulation of the blood between the different vertebrate groups due to adaptations during evolution and associated difference in the anatomy. So, fish have a two-chambered heart with unidirectional circulation. Amphibians have a three-chambered heart which has some mixing up of the blood and they have double circulation. Most non-avian reptiles have a three-chambered heart but have little mixing up of the blood. So they have double circulation. So mammals and birds have a four-chambered heart with no mixing up of blood and double circulation. So the question comes here, which of the following has three-chambered heart? Is it the lion, pigeon, fish or lizard? So the right option is lizard. Moving on to the next question, so the explanation comes like this. So white blood cells are also called as leukocytes. So they protect you against illness and disease. Think of white blood cells as your immunity cells. In a sense, they are always at war. They flow through your bloodstream to fight viruses, bacteria and other foreign invaders that threaten your health. So you can see the blood cells, monocyte, eosinophils, basophils, lymphocytes, neutrophils, the RBCs and the platelets. So these are the different cells and the different types with their functions of the blood. So the question comes here. The component of blood which makes 
chemical is known as antibodies is is it platelets is it white blood cells is it red blood cells or is it plasma it is the white blood cells which make the antibodies in the blood so the next explanation as the heart pumps blood a series of valves open and close tightly these valves ensure the blood flow in only one direction preventing the back flow the tricuspid valve is situated between the right atrium and the right ventricle the pulmonary valve is between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery so you can see how the blood enters into the heart so through the superior and inferior vena cava into the right atrium through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle through the pulmonary valve it enters the pulmonary artery then into the lungs so through the lungs through the left atrium it enters the purified blood and enters the left ventricle then through the aorta it's been pumped to the rest of the body let's look into the question now what prevents the back flow of blood inside the heart during contraction is it a thick muscular walls of the ventricles is it option b the valves is it option c thin walls of atrium or is it all so it's the valves which prevent the back flow of the blood inside the heart during contraction so next again there's a lot of question being asked on the nephrons itself so it is the filtration unit of kidney the structural and functional unit of kidney excretory system it consists of tubule which is connected with the collecting duct at one end and a cup shaped structure at the other end the filtrate passes into the tubular part of the nephron this filtrate contains glucose amino acids urea uric acid salts and a major amount of water so here comes the question the excretory unit in humans excretory system is called is it neuron is it ureter is it nephron or is it bladder the excretory unit in human excretory system is nephron so moving on to the next question the substance which is not reabsorbed into the blood capillaries surrounding the tubule of a nephron is is it glucose is it amino acids is it urea or is it water so here children they are asking the substance which is not reabsorbed into the blood capillaries so it's the urea so here comes the next concept regarding the xylem so xylem transports water and minerals obtained from the soil so phloem transports products of photosynthesis from the leaves to the other parts of the plant so vessels tracheids of the roots stem and leaves are connected to form a continuous system in xylem cells to transport water to all the parts of the plant so here in the diagram you can see the xylem vessel and the phloem vessel too so here comes a question in autotrophs autotrophs are nothing but the plants in autotrophs water is transported through is it roots is it phloem is it stomata is it through xylem so the right option is xylem so excretion in plants so the gums oils latex resins etc so these are some of the waste products stored in the plant parts like bark it could be stem leaves etc eventually plants shed off these parts also so plants produce two gaseous waste products that is the oxygen during photosynthesis and carbon dioxide during respiration excretion of gaseous waste in plants take place through the stomatal pores on the leaves excess of water is also excreted from the plant body through the stomatal pores and from the surfaces of roots and stems too the process of elimination of water is called as transpiration sometimes they even excrete into the soil looking at the last question over here what are the methods the plants used to excrete the waste materials 
So option A, waste materials in plants accumulates in mature leaves and falls off. Waste materials such as glue, resins accumulate in the aged xylem and they stop to function. Many plants waste are stored in the vacuoles. So the correct option is all. So all these above methods are used by plants to excrete the waste materials. Thank you so much for joining children. All the best.